Hey everyone, this is Erin at Heavy Magazine and today I'm very honoured to be talking to Lacuna Coil's Andrea. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for your time. I'm really happy to be talking about Australia and all the new things coming. Straight off the bat, I do need to clarify so that I don't make a dick of myself. Are we calling the latest record <laughs> Comalize 20 or Comalize XX? As you prefer, obviously the XX are Roman's number that stands for 20. So two times 10 basically, so 20. So you can call it 20 or XX is fine. You know, XX is more sexy. I was saying yesterday to a journalist because he say that in America, XX sometimes is stand for hardcore stuff, you know, and I say, well, that's fine. You know, it's the sexiness of the record. So. <laughs> so really it just depends on the mood you're in. Like if you're feeling a bit sexy, we'll go with XX. Exactly. Is this XX or 20 if you feel more boring. <laughs> All right. I'm, I just had to clear that one up. <laughs> so yeah, you are about to celebrate the milestone that is the 20th anniversary of Comalize. Um, but like, this is way more than just like a usual remastering jobby, right? Like this is a full like renovation of the old girl. Yes. Basically it, the, we knew that the 20th anniversary was coming and, uh, we were speaking with our label Century Media and uh, one idea could have been to just remaster the record. Well, when you remaster a record, basically you take the file, the music files, you compress them and in the end, the record sounds louder. That's all you do when you remaster a record. So we thought for such an iconic record, maybe it wasn't enough, you know? So we decided instead to try to rework it deconstruct it and and bring it into 2022 this not to erase what we've done in the past in uh, in matter of fact the physical edition of the record will have both cities the original and the new version so it's a celebration to, of the record not not to erase the past you know or to change the past and uh, and this is the idea was just to challenge ourselves and see how it would sound in 2022 with the approach we're using from the past couple of records like Delirium and Black Anima and to see how it would sound with the current lineup, which is slightly different than the original lineup. We have two new members in the band, a guitar player and a drummer, uh, which are now in the band for like six, seven years. And so to see how we could bring it in the, in the contemporary era of Lacuna Coil, you know? And I think it sounds pretty good. I think we, we tried the song live already a little bit and it's, it's working pretty well. It flows pretty well. And the fans they got to hear the first four songs on the recent tour we just finished in North America with Butcher Babies. And they were very positively impressed by the, the versions of the songs. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely double X sexy. I've heard it myself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, it, it would be easy to just go down the road of remastering, but everyone does that. I think it's a really cool and potentially brave step to take to redo the whole album. When comparing to the technology in the studio from 2002 to like present day, there's obviously a lot of change and I'm going to assume as well that your budget was a little different back then. So like what kinds of things were at your disposal this time around that you were excited to implement? Most of the things were different in the studio because uh, Comalize original in 2002 was recorded in analog. So it was on a tape. And, uh, and actually what that was making it difficult for us when we were re-listened to the original version and to, uh, to understand the different arrangements of the keyboards, of the violins and stuff like that, because we don't have the separate tracks of the record. So we had to listen carefully and try to guess what we were doing back then with the arrangements and, and the parts, you know. So for, for Mark, our bass player, which is the main musical producer and, uh, and of the band, it, it was a very big job to re-listen to everything, understand, remember, and separate the tracks. And it was a, a, a huge job. And also it was very difficult to understand where was the limit of changing the songs and not make them too different, you know, or too unrecognizable. You know, it, it needs to, there needs to be a midway where you, okay, you know what song it is. It sounds slightly different, more aggressive, more dark in a way, because we wanted this record to be a super gothic, heavy version of the Comalize because we're living in more extreme times in a way, you know? So we feel 2022 is more extreme than 2002 in terms of the situation with the war here in Europe and the pandemic and all this weirdness, all this uncertain future we have in front of us. So we wanted this record to represent the, the, the era we're living also in the, the version of this record. So we, yeah, we, we use a lot of the technology, obviously, 
but that's already something we've already done in the past three, four records, you know, because more or less the techniques are the same nowadays. But it's definitely easier to record uh, this version of Kamalice than the original ones you know, with the tape. And I'm going to assume as well that some of the songs, obviously you would have been playing the more popular songs live, but there would have to be songs on the album, right, that you probably haven't touched or played maybe in all of that time. Am I right? Yeah, there are, I think there are two that we never played at all, never played live at all. And uh, the rest we played, but obviously there are three or four that we always played and, and then the others very sporadically or a lot back in 2002, 2003, four tours. And then along the way they got lost because obviously new songs uh, came on board on the set list. So yes, there, there's, this, uh, this is a good version of having a possibility of playing some of these older songs in the new version so that even people that is not super familiar with the, the old Kamalize and not just Evans Lie or Swamp, they can listen to the songs in this new version, where, which is maybe more appealing for a, a more current crowd that we have that doesn't consist only of people that has been following the band for 20 years, you know? Yeah, yeah. I was going to actually say you might need to explain what analog is because there might be some people listening that don't even, they weren't even born in that time. <laughs> yeah, even even the two guys that play with us nowadays, they're younger than us. And when the Comalize came out, they were kids. They were kids in school, you know, so they obviously they know what it is, but they didn't live lived it as much as we did or people our age that found out about the record and, and grow up with the record, you know, that, that for them, it was not their record. You know, they, they didn't found out about Lacuna Coil with that record, for example. Yeah, for sure. And I promise I'm not trying to make you feel old by, <laughs> by bringing that up. <laughs> what song do you think like got the biggest facelift out of the lot? Probably I would say Daylight Dancer is the one that is the most challenging one they're the most the one that is a little bit different there's some parts that are very close to the original but uh, the chorus especially uh, it's very di different than the than the, the previous version so i think daylight dancer is the one that maybe and daylight dancer and uh, aeon which is a uh, sort of an intro it's just a two minute song basically uh, only christina and uh, it was acoustic guitars and christina with some samples in the beginning and now it's become some weird, almost folkish, uh, dark intro. <laughs> so those two probably are the ones that are more different. And there's like some melody and key changes too, right? Yes, we try to keep it. Obviously back then when we wrote Kamalas, we weren't uh, as much expert songwriter as we are now. So we also, also the, the old key of Kamalas is all very similar because that's the, the knowledge we had back then when we wrote that album. Nowadays, we, we tend to variate more the keys and stuff like that. And so we have also tried to change a little bit the, the speed and the keys of certain parts of the songs without completely changing, of course. Yeah, for sure. Going back to when you were saying about like 2002 and 2022, obviously, very different times i noticed that there were um uh, is it the ver the second last song where there's oh, like sample tracks and stuff like that where you you can hear um like news reports and stuff like that coming through about covid and i thought that was super cool yes and that's uh angel's punishment yeah yeah and uh, the original version also had samples from the news uh back in 2002 and then that, that those news were about the the gulf war which was happening back then and uh, now we have the same sample news vocals from uh, COVID, obviously, because we thought that was a more contemporary topic. So if we would have wrote the song in 2022, obviously COVID was the main event uh, that struck our event. Maybe now is the war, you know, the war in Ukraine. But but back when we when we, we reworked the Comalize, it, it was just. Uh, uh, the the COVID was the main thing. I think that's a super cool concept to be able to put the two songs together and just see. I mean, it's one thing to change the feel of the, the album musically and compare the two, but then you, the themes coming together like that as well, it just kind of, it wraps the whole thing up so nicely. It must be a really satisfying feeling to have created it all over again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a challenge, as you say before, because uh, obviously when you touch some holy ground, like the a record that has been very important in your career, it's always risky, you know, because there's going to be people that's going to hate it forever because they, they don't want that record to be touched in any way. 
And there's gonna be people who loved it because they never found out about the previous version of the record, or they they knew it, but it's not the one they grew up to. So it, it's it's challenge, but we like to challenge ourselves and our listener. The way we do it in every record, we do we try to obviously we do have a style that we're gonna bring forward, but we try to contaminate this style with a slightly different directions every time, you know, because that's the way we are. We listen to bands, we listen to new bands. We listen to old bands, so we try to incorporate everything that we like, whether it's from the present or the past in our music. You know, we've never been a band that's keep on repeating the same formula all over the place. You know, we obviously we do have a style, as I say, that we, we will carry on, but we try to incorporate as many as fresh elements as we can. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a very big difference between having your own sound and your own style and being formulaic. And I don't think your band is formulaic at all. Yeah, I mean, we tried at least <laughs> not to be. So you've experimented with your vocal styles over the years too. And um, on Comalize 20, like you've opted for the harsher sort of what's like pitch screaming or growls. Um, like what was your personal approach and motivation to how you decided on presenting your vocals on this record? You know, basically, we, as I said, we were also trying to bring it into the sound of the band now, which features more of my, <laughs> my growl vocals or extreme vocals. And, uh, but what we wanted to represent is also that this is a, a, a darker version of the record, like a super gothic metal 2022 version of the record. And so we wanted to, the record to be more, a little bit more extreme, you know, a little bit more harsh and, and rough. And we did it also, if you take the cover of the record, for example, I don't know if people have seen it, but the original one has a, a sunflower with an eye in the middle. And this one has a dead flower in the front, which is, it looks like a, almost like a logo or, but it's, it is actually a photo of a flower that our bass player took in the, in the countryside. And, uh, and, uh, it, this represent also the, 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 the darkness of times that have been switching from the, the fully alive some flower of the original one into the dead flower of the, the current one, you know, you represent the change of times and the change of approach that we had in the, in the 20 years between the albums. And so the vocals also follow that steps, you know, even the drums are more extreme. Uh, some of the guitar parts for us, it is a, a gothier version of the album. Yeah, uh, that is super grim, I must say. <laughs> um, and I was going to ask you if there was a tie into the the artwork on both albums. So thank you for explaining that. Do you think, I mean, you guys seem like such upbeat, fun, humorous people, but that sounds like a very dark approach to how you look at it, that times have gotten darker. Is that the overall feel and where you kind of, the themes of the music are going? It, it is the, not the, not just the music. I think it's the old society that it's going in this way, which, yeah. but I, I don't think it's a necessarily a negative thing. You know, it's, we like to push darkness, especially in the artistic part of our life, you know, not so much in everyday life. We're pretty stupid, funny, you know, we like to have fun. We still do a lot of stupid jokes and stuff like that because we enjoy life, you know, but it's, I think life is also made of the dark times of your life. You know, your experiences, your tragic experiences are very often more inspiring than, than happy experiences. And when you have a party with your friends, you surely will have stories to tell, but, but probably you won't have learned much from it. You know, while when you go to a, a more tragic moment of your life, you surely have learned much more and it's that it, it has a, a deepness that you don't have adapt, sorry, that you don't have on a brighter side sometimes. So we'd like to use this darkness and push it out in the artistic part of the band, but not so much on the day life, you know, on the day to day life, we're very happy, stupid, <laughs> funny people, you know? So it, it is a way for us to express our one side of our life, which is, I think everybody's can relate to. And so it, it, times are what they are, you know, we can control them. We can say, oh, it used to be better, you know, that's. It's not true, you know, dark, there's always been good and bad, in, even in the past, but it, it is overall the, the whole atmosphere of the world, the current world is very uncertain, I think, even more than dark, it's very uncertain. And so we wanted to represent these changes in the times, but I'm sure we will make it through. I'm sure the human race will be able to face this and to use it in their own advantage and move forward. But it's definitely something to think about, I think. Oh, for sure. I thought tightrope actually had a very, like the melody change for tightrope had quite a 
hopeful sound to it. So I don't think it's all dark. No, no, not at all. Yeah, some songs actually Carmelize. It was portrayed as a very dark record because we were coming from the gothic metal scene from Europe and obviously we were dressing black and all those cliches. So most of the people thought it was a super gothic record. For me, it was some of the melody weren't so gothic uh, and, and so dark, uh, to be honest. And so when we went back and, and checked the melodies and checked the arrangements, we found out, oh, that wasn't so as dark as we thought it was, you know. So some songs, it was very hard to make them sound more dark, you know. Some other, they're easier to do, but I think it's a, our music is always in the dark mood, but always with a positive outlook. You know, there's always a little light at the end of the tunnel approach in our lyrics and in our uh, music in general, I think. Well, let's talk about good things. Cause you guys will be here in a couple of months for the good things festival. Was your last time in Australia, 2016, am I right? Yes. Yes. That's when we came for a uh, delirium for the headliner tour. And it was our third time in Australia after the sound wave and the gigant tour with Megadeth. And, uh, and that was the third time. And now we're coming for the fourth time. Yeah. Awesome. So six years then since you've been here and Australia hasn't had a festival on the scale of good things since pre COVID. So look, it's safe to say the vibes are going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> Your live shows are very theatrical. Like how much of that are you going to be able to bring to a festival scenario? A festival obviously is not always easy to bring that also because you usually play in the daytime. So it's not as dark as you should be. You can use the light as much as you would normally use in a, in a club show, but obviously we're going to bring our, all our, as much as we can of our choreography. And, uh, and I think it's very, the theatrical thing is also a lot in the way me and Christina interact and, and the pose on stage. So we're going to bring that, but also the festival is also a party situation, you know, in, in a way. So it's, it's, if you play in the daytime, it's more going to be focused on the energy and the interaction with the people and the, the happiness of being there for the first time after so, so long and of not having that kind of shows anymore. So hopefully it's going to be a big party for this time. Yeah. Oh, it will be huge. So no, le no levitating harnesses for Christina then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's going to happen in a, in a festival concert. <laughs> what are the pros and cons of playing a festival versus your own headline show? Yeah, but surely in the headline shows is more intimate and, uh, and you get a better relationship with that. For me personally, my taste is always when I go to see a band and to see them in a club, which is a maximum of 1000, 2000 people maximum. I don't like shows in arenas or stuff like that because I don't like to see the band from a screen. You know, I want to see them in the face more or less, you know, hundred percent same. <laughs> so that those is the perfect setting for me for a show, but a festival, I think it's a whole other animal, you know, it's something completely different It's more about the, the vibe with the crowd, get them crowd going on the rhythm and then this exchange of energy. So they're two completely different situations you know if you want to be more accurate you go to the club show if we want to be more energetic and having a great time you go to the festival i, I think it's a two opposite situation yeah for sure are there perhaps any plans for a headlining tour in australia in the near future yeah we're working on something we're working on something so hopefully we're going to be able to announce it as soon as possible well we're working on something <laughs> Yeah, that would be awesome. So the fans can get the best of both worlds, the party atmosphere of the festival and the intimacy of the headlining show would be awesome. Are there any artists on the Good Things lineup that you are particularly psyched to watch from side of stage? Um, most of them, to be honest, it's a great lineup, I think, because there's a very big variety of bands. So I want to see Bring Me The Horizon that I haven't seen since we toured together in, uh, in Australia, actually. It's the only time we toured together. And they were still on the death core kind of genre you know, before they open up to a more melodic music. And then Deftones is always a classic act to see, uh, obviously. And uh, no effects, I've never seen them live. Uh, our friends in Ginger, they're always a great live band and they're great friends. So th there's many, many great bands to, to check out. And so yeah, I love the variety of it, of the lineup. Oh, it's a great lineup. I'm so psyched for it. <laughs> Are you going to do anything to prepare yourselves for the Australian summer? Because the last Good Things Festival was insanely hot. All right. <laughs> we had a pretty warm summer here in Europe too. So hopefully we trained a little bit. 
but that the yeah the two odd is not exactly the best thing for 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 playing because obviously you don't want to feel like passing out to on stage but uh i, I mean i'm sure we're going to be ready for it you know we we are excited to come back and no matter what the finally see the our people there and and be there for after cancelling the tour before the covid so it's going to be great just the fact that we're able to be there and back to what we love back to see the people that has been very loyal to us and all these new people that never heard of us so it's going to be great to, to just be there you know it doesn't matter if it's going to be warm we're gonna sweat <laughs> Well, I like to wrap things up with a less business-like and fun question. So since you're playing Good Things Festival, what are your top five good things in life? Ooh, top five. Uh, being Italian, I have to say food is one of those, especially Italian food, because it's a, for us, it's a religion here. Then obviously my family, uh, family, my wife and all the, all the family, and I'm still lucky to have. Uh, my cats, I have two black cats called uh, Selma and Patti, and uh, I love them, two females. Then I have, uh, I like my, my soccer team, AC Milan, which is a big love since I was a kid, so I always <laughs> watch the game. And I, I'd have to say probably music, obviously, uh, metal music, not just metal, but music in general. Uh, it's, it's, I always have some sort of soundtrack in my head, you know, when I see a scene on the street or where I always combine it with music somehow so that, that's uh, definitely one of the biggest love of my life great answers is there anything else you'd like to say before we close things off well, we're really excited to be back and uh, to see our friends that we haven't been able to see and uh, it's gonna be great so just stay tuned we got more surprises to come also next year but first we'll see you live in australia see you soon awesome thank you so very much for your time i can't wait to see you guys in december good things and in the meantime Everyone, make sure you get your ears around Comalize 20 when it becomes available on October 14. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for the space. No worries at all. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye.